Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about two separate topics in Java. The first thing we're going to talk about are nested loops. And a nested loop is a special structure in Java, which is basically just a loop inside of a loop. So we have two loops and we have this first like high level loop. And then inside of that loop, we actually have another loop. And I'm going to show you guys how you can create a nested loop and we'll talk about why they're useful and what situations we can use them in. Then I also want to talk to you guys about two dimensional arrays and a two dimensional array is essentially just an array where every single element inside the array is itself an array. And so it's a way that we can define like a sort of a matrix or a grid as a data structure. So the first thing I want to show you guys is nested loops though. So let's come down here and I'm basically going to create a nested loop. So I want to say four and I'm just going to make a normal for loop. So I'm going to say int i is equal to zero. We'll say i is less than three. Actually, I want to start i off at one just so we can kind of illustrate this a little bit better. And then we'll say i plus plus. Now inside of this for loop, I'm actually going to create another for loop. So I'm going to say four and this time instead of making a variable called i, we have to make a variable called j because we already used i up here. So I can't make another variable called i because it'll override this one up here. So I'm just going to say int j is equal to zero. We'll say j is less than like four and we'll say j plus plus. So now I have this original loop and inside of this loop we have a nested loop. So basically what's going to happen is every time we iterate through this I loop, we're going to completely iterate through the J loop. So we'll complete a full looping through of the J loop for every one iteration through the I loop. And that's going to make sense in a second. So down here, I'm just going to print out the values for I and J on every iteration of this loop. So I'm just going to say system dot out dot print line. And we're just going to print out I and J. So I'll just say I is equal to, and then we'll put I in there. And then we can say J is equal to, and we'll put J in here. And so now I should be printing out values for I and J as we go through this nested loop. So I'm going to hit the play button and I'm going to run the program. And now we'll be able to see what got printed out. So over here on the screen, and actually I want to make J start at one instead of zero. Sorry. All right, so let's run it again. And over here on the screen, you can see that we have these corresponding values. So you can see we have values for i and values for j. So let's look at some of these values. It says i is equal to one, j is equal to one, i is equal to one, j is equal to two, i is equal to one, j is equal to three. So you'll notice that the value for i is staying the same, right? And so on all three of these printouts, we're only on the first iteration of the I loop, right? We're only on like the first time that it's gone through, but you'll notice that J is entirely looping through. So J goes from one to two to three. So for every one iteration of that I loop, we completely loop through the entire J loop. Now you can see we come down here, it says I is equal to two. And just in that iteration, we're looping through the entirety of the J loop. So that's basically what's happening with these nested for loops is for every one iteration of this top loop, we completely iterate through the bottom loop and nested loops can be really cool. And there's actually a few situations where we're going to want to use them. I'm going to show you guys one right now, but first I actually want to talk to you about another thing we can use in Java, which is called a two dimensional array. And a two dimensional array is an array where every element of the array is an array. So it's like array within an array. And I'm going to show you guys how we can create one of those. So I'm just going to come up here and the way that we create a two dimensional array is very similar to the way that we create a normal array. So I'm just going to say int cause we're going to create an array of integers and then we're going to make two open and close square brackets like that. And now I want to give this a name. So I'm just going to call this number grid. So we're going to be creating a number grid and there's actually a couple different ways that we can go about making this. So one way would be to say equals new int and then make two open and close square brackets like this. And inside of these square brackets, I'm going to have to give this some information. So I'm, I'm going to have to put some numbers in here. 
And inside this first, first box, we're defining how many rows we want to have in the array. So in other words, like how many items do we want to have? We could say like three. And then this box over here is defining how many columns we want to have. Or in other words, like how many elements we want each array inside of the array to have. So we could say like four. But I think this is a little confusing. And just because we're just learning two dimensional arrays, I'm going to create one using this open and close curly brace syntax. So inside of these open and close curly brackets, we can put the elements of our array. Right. And if I was creating a normal array, I could just do something like this. So I could put like some names, I could put like Jim, put like Karen, right? I'm putting all these different entries inside of this array. But with a two dimensional array, every single entry in the array has to be another array. So I'm going to make an entry just like this. And this is going to be a valid entry in our array. And so inside here, I'm just going to put some numbers. So I'll just say one, two, three. And then we can make another element, which is going to be another array. We can say four, five, six, and we'll do one for seven, eight, nine. And finally, we'll make another entry in here just for zero. So I'll just say zero. And you'll notice that this has fewer elements than these other three. And that's actually okay. And that's one of the benefits of defining the variable this way is that we can control all of the individual elements. So you'll see like this is the first element in the array, but it's an array, right? This is the second element in the array and it's an array. This is the third and then the fourth. So I want to show you guys how we can actually access these values. So I'm just going to print out and we'll see if we can print out some of these different values. So I'm going to say system dot out dot print line. And suppose we wanted to access this one right here up at the top left. The way I can access that value is by referring to exactly where it is inside of our little matrix here. So I can just say number grid and I want to give this two open and closed boxes. And inside of this first box, I want to put the item in the array that I want to access. So like I said, this was the first item. This is the second item. This is the third item. So I'm going to put a zero because I want to access this first item in the array. And remember, arrays are indexed starting with zero. Over here, I want to put the item inside of this original array that I want to access. So this is going to be the zeroth element inside of number grid zero. So I'm just going to put zero. And now we should be printing out a one onto the screen. So you can see over here, we get our one. Suppose I wanted to access this six. Well, I can do something similar. So six is in the second list item. So we can come down here and we'll put a one. And it's in the zero, one, two index position. So we'll just say two. And now we should be able to access that six, which we do over here. So that's basically how we can access any of these elements inside of the two dimensional array. So taking what we learned about two dimensional arrays and taking what we learned about nested for loops, let's combine our knowledge and we'll write a nested for loop that's capable of printing out all of the elements in the array. So it looks just like this. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that down here in our nested for loop. I just want to modify a few things. The first thing I want to modify is up here in this original loop. So instead of having I equal to zero equal to one, I'm going to have I equal to zero because the array indexes start at zero. And instead of saying I is less than three, really what I want to do is I want to say I is less than number grid dot length. So this top loop is going to be responsible for looping through all of the rows inside of our array. So I'll say that one more time. This I loop, this top loop is responsible for looping through all of our list items. So it's going to loop through here, through here, through here, and then through here. It's going to loop over each one of those items. And then down here in the J loop, again, I want to set J equal to zero, but I want to say J is less than the number of elements inside of each individual array. So we're basically just going to say number grid I dot length. So basically what we're saying here is this J loop is actually going to loop through each individual element of each individual array. So the J loop is going to loop through this, this, and this. Whereas the I loop is just looping over this array, 
this array and this array and the J loop loops through each individual element inside of each one of those arrays. So hopefully that is a little bit clear. And then down here, I'm just gonna print out the element inside of the array. So I'm just gonna say number grid I and J. So let's just take a look at this and see how, it, see if it works or not. And then I'll sort of walk you guys through what we did one more time. So I'm gonna run this. And actually I wanna do one more thing. So after we run this uh, J loop, I'm just gonna say system.out.println. So I'm gonna print a new line. And this will just make it a little bit easier for us to see what's happening, so. And actually one more thing, instead of printing a line up here, I'm just gonna do a normal print, so. Now when we run this, it's gonna look a little bit better. Okay, so here we are, and we're actually printing out all of the elements inside of this two-dimensional array. So I'm gonna walk you guys through one more time what we did down here in this nested loop, so hopefully you can kind of wrap your mind around it. So over here, I created this for loop, right? And this for loop, this top for loop, is responsible for looping over all of the elements inside the number grid and the elements inside the number grid are all arrays. So it's basically just looping through this, through this, through this, and through this. It's only going through four times, right? Down here, inside of this J loop, I'm looping through all of the elements inside each element of the array. So the J loop is responsible for looping through like this, this, and this, and then it loops through this, this, and this, and then it loops through this, this, and this, and loops through this. So the J loop is looping through all of the elements inside of each of these individual arrays, and the I loop is just looping through the arrays themselves. Hopefully that makes sense. And down here, we're printing out I and J. So this refers to the row number, right? It refers to like the vertical row number inside that list. And this refers to the column number. So like each element inside of that list. And by formatting it this way, we're able to print out each one of those elements. And you'll notice here, I just used a print line down here in order to like format it a little bit better. And I used a print up here, again, just to sort of format it a little bit better. So that's the basics of using nested loops with two dimensional arrays. If this isn't super clear, don't get intimidated. This is a sort of a tough concept to kind of wrap your head around. All you have to do is just take the example that I gave you in this lesson, play around with it, tweak it, modify it, try to break it apart and, and really see how it works. And eventually you'll just sort of be able to see how this works and you'll really understand what's going on with these nested loops. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.